hello I'm coming back to you again the first one cut out on me let's so let's start this thing over again I'm coming back with think on these things Thursdays where every Thursday I will bring a topic of something to just give us a word of encouragement something to ponder on it's it's usually a brief word but sometimes less is better uh, this is August 22nd, Thursday, August 22nd. For those of you who've tuned in before, you know that the base scripture comes from Philippians 4 and 8. Okay? Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and a good report, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Focus and center your mind and implant them in your heart. And this is from Philippians 4, 8, the Amplified Version. So today, the topic that I want to speak on is every idle word. I should have done a study on how many words that we can speak. I know I've heard it said before that a man can speak 5,000 words, and a woman can speak 22,000 words. We always speak more than the man. Do we have a man can get to the point, say a sentence in as brief words as possible, where a woman has to, like, for instance, honey, did you go to the store today? Oh, yes, I went to the store, and while I was there, I saw so-and-so, and then this was on sale, and so I decided to get this, and then I thought, well, what could I make for dinner today? Blah, 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 blah. And the man is thinking, all I ask is, did you go to the store today? That's just a yes or no. <laughs> so we communicate differently as men and women. Get used to it. Sometimes the things we say, a man can say something and a woman can totally take it out of context. Or vice versa. That is not what I meant when I said that. So the words we speak can be used to create build up, or they can be used to destroy and tear down. So in talking about every idle word, we as believers who are serious about following Jesus Christ, we need to become aware of how we represent him and how we represent him not only by what we speak, but by our actions and by our conduct. Because one day we will all stand and have to give an account for everything we say, everything we do. Every idle word, <clears throat> every word, but every idle word in addition to it, every word that was not necessary. So let's look at the scripture for this. The word tells us in Matthew twelve thirty six. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, and that word men means mankind, men and women, every other word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. That's Matthew twelve thirty six. So Romans 14 and 11 also lets us know, as surely as I live, says the Lord. Not Facebook, not TikTok, not Instagram. As surely as I said, says the Lord. Every knee, not pick and choose. Oh, you're, you, you know, you're in my clique, so I'll let you go. I'll let you slide. Um, no, every means everybody. Knee shall bow before me, and every tongue will confess and acknowledge God. So we have to be careful. Every one of us are going to stand before the Lord one day and have to give an account. So those of us who proclaim to be believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are going to be probably judged more strictly because we should know better. And those of us who teach, we will be judged more strictly too. What exactly are idle words, what are the idle words that the Bible is referring to? Well, number one, we know that our words are powerful. Words started with our Father God who created this whole world just and everything in it just by a spoken word. So his words had the power to create, 
and his words had the power to destroy when the world was destroyed by the flood in Noah's time. That's a lot of power in the words. And we were created in his image. So we have to realize that we too have the power to create and tear down. How do we know that? We can base it on the word that Proverbs 18.21 says. It lets us know that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now we're not talking about um, just those who carry a title in the church. No, every tongue, every one of us, just like every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, those that are saved and unsaved, we have the power. Death and life is in the power. You've heard of people being, you know, they're raised, a lot of it depends on the environment we're raised in. You may have been brought up in a situation or in a home where nothing was ever good enough. Nothing you did, nothing you said was ever good enough. Or you're always told, oh, you'll never amount to anything. Well, all those years of listening to something like that is going to get in your heart. And then that's how you're going to begin to think about your own self. That I'm never going to amount to anything. I'm never going to have anything. Um, I was told once, this was when I was married before, I was told once by a man of God that my first husband and I, we were never going to have anything. We were never going to live in anything more than a trailer. Like that was a bad thing. And that does a lot to hit your self-esteem. That, that's a low blow. It really is. And this was by a man of God who spoke this to us. But we had to find that thing. We had to rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. Just because there were other people in the area that had more money than us and could live. I mean, what was he basing it on? What was he, was he basing this on? Only outward appearance? Um, and the ones who lived better than us in a house ended up falling first. You got to be careful what you say. But anyways, in a court, like here's another situation. You could also be told just the opposite. You could grow up and say, you know what? You can be anything that you want to be. You know, if I had uh, a mom, my mom was a nurse. My dad was a teacher. So that generation would say, they would just assume you're either going to be a teacher or a nurse when you grow up. I didn't want to be either one of them. That is not what I liked. I had always liked admin work. When I was in high school, I took all the office classes. I was an admin person. Um, so I, I kind of halfway listened. I didn't let that get to me because I didn't become what somebody else wanted me to be. But um, let's say, let's give this example. Let's say in a court of law. Words have the power to put that defendant in jail for life or even given death sentence. The words that a jury speaks can mean, it can mean whether the defendant lives or dies, whether they get to stay in jail or get out or get the death sentence for something that they've done. It's going to come from the words of the jury. Our words have the power to discourage and tear down someone. Or on the flip side of that, our words can bring power to give hope and joy to others versus dismay and doubt and unbelief even not just in others but even in our own self we have David had to encourage himself we have to encourage ourselves. we have to go to this word every day and encourage ourselves regardless of what we see regardless of what we're told whether it be on the job in our marriages um in church people can look down on you in churches um, we have to encourage ourselves and remember who we are in Christ. And we have to speak that to ourselves. Um, idle words. What are idle words? Idle words are careless. They're inactive. And they're unprofitable words that we can speak. They can also be evil words. That's what idle words are. So we're admonished to make the best use of our words. Now, I know sometimes we react really fast in situations and we don't think before we throw up and vomit a bunch of trash that we shouldn't have said, especially if we get in an argument with somebody. We're, we're quick to blurt out something and don't even take time to think about it. Remember, 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 these are words that you are going to have to give an account for. Is it easy to do? No. 
I have spoken a lot of idle words in my lifetime that I will have to give an account for. Um, and sometimes us in the, in the body of Christ, our walk doesn't match our talk. We can put on a display of being holier than thou, blessed and highly favored in front of our brothers and sisters in Christ, and then behind closed doors when you're not at church and, or in another area you think nobody's watching, nobody's listening, except you forget that God knows and sees everything. You forget that part. You're conducting your life completely the opposite. How does this happen? That these these words that we shouldn't be speaking or should be speaking. How does this happen? It's by what we see. That's why this encourages us to stay in the word daily, to pray daily. We're going to make mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes. But to stay in, stay in the word daily, encourage ourselves. It can happen innocently. We're still supposed to set a guard on our hearts by what we watch on TV. There's all kinds of mess on TV that is not good. There's all kinds of things on social media, such as Facebook, Tic Tac. Tic, tic Tac. No, that's what you eat. I'm sorry. Tic Tac is a candy. Tic Tock. That lets you know how much I use that. Um, Tic Tock. Instagram. Magazines, even. I knew this man who went to church on Sunday. He wore a suit. And on his same coffee table in his apartment that he laid his big old Bible on that he never read except for when he would carry it to church. It matched his suit, by the way. He would carry it to church. On that same table, he had a stack of Playboy magazines that he would read when he was home alone. Forgotten that God sees and knows everything. And one day I asked him, why do you keep all those magazines? Do you know what that man told me? He said, I read it for the articles. I, I, you don't want to know what my response was. But I know he did not think I was stupid. I was not born off the back of a truck. I was not an idiot. Oh, there's such important, helpful articles in a Playboy magazine. Yeah, right. But he never read his Bible for the articles or the word that was in there. Hmm. Okay. But these things start out as a seed. And the more you begin to feed it, the more he began to feed that and water it, that thing would grow in you. <laughs> you get out of hell. You begin to act out and say and do things that you shouldn't be doing that's not appropriate, that's not pleasing in the sight of God. Especially those of us who confess to be Christians. It can, it starts out as a seed. It seems innocent. It begins to grow. It could even be in the form of gossip. There are so many people, especially church folks, that love to get on social media and listen to the latest gossip. They just want to know what's going on. To some of these big time preachers and some of these famous people that they get caught up with, and I'm not mentioning no names, and then they begin to talk about it. They spend more time talking about it to other people then they do the word of God that they heard in church that for that last Sunday service or Wednesday service. They're going to have to give an account for this. Um, things that we might say together when we're on the job with your coworkers or with your friends or with other brothers and sisters in Christ or with your spouse. So we need to guard who and what we let in our lives. We need to guard what we see, what we hear, and what we speak. Proverbs 4, 23 and 24 says, Above all else, guard your heart from everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep correct, corrupt talk far from your lips. And like I said earlier, I get it. People just want to gag at the idea, Oh God, I got to be nice. That man just cursed cursed me out on the job, and I got to be nice to him. I have to zip the lip and let it go. Sometimes that's a hard thing to do when we have to zip the lip. You can get in an argument with someone, and that there's always somebody who wants to drive the point home and just argue and argue and argue, knowing that they're always right and you're always wrong. Sometimes it's better to just... Be still, be quiet, give it to the Holy Spirit. 
fight your battle for you and just be quiet and just let it go versus getting angry back at that person, throwing out something that you cannot take back. Because while we can forgive the other person, you can't take back what spit out your mouth. You can hurt people. You just don't realize you can cut people with your tongue. You can cut people with the words that you speak and hurt them. And sometimes that thing dwells in you, that hurtful thing that somebody says to you. I think especially more so with women than with men. I'm not a man, so I don't know, but I've always heard that two men can get in an argument and the next thing you know, they're friends like nothing ever happened. Women, on the other hand, like my husband always says, I'm the incubator. I hold things. I hold on to things and then might bring it up later. Or sometimes there might be something I want to say and I, I have this little cliche that I use. I'll just keep it in my back pocket. And at the appropriate time, I'll pull it out. And sometimes it's for good. It's not always a bad thing. But we as women can retain hurt feelings a lot longer than a man can. Maybe. I don't know if that's true or not. So if you get in an argument with somebody, sometimes it's better just to take a deep breath, calm down. Because you can learn to agree to disagree. The other person might think they're right. And at the same time, you're going to always think that you're right. You have to learn to respect each other. You have to learn to listen and hear each other's heart out. And then come to an agreement that you're going to work on whatever the particular issue is and try to resolve it amicably. I've already said that word. Amicably. Amicably. Uh, try to resolve the issue versus saying things that you're not going to ever be able to take back. Because that thing's going to stay there. And another verse that tells us, Luke 6.45 says, Good people have good things saved in their hearts. That's why they say good things. I know. Really? Do I got to always say good things? Sometimes if you don't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. Have you ever heard that before? It goes on to say, But those who have evil hearts full of evil and that's why they say things that are evil what people say with their mouths comes from what fills their hearts what fills your heart today what fills your heart from yesterday that you carried over to today what things have you got going in, on in your life that you just don't want to let go of that you can't let go of what things are good going on in your life that are giving you joy and hope Fulfillment. I mean, we all go through hard times. And sometimes those things, sometimes it's not what people say. It's the conditions and the situations we get in that can fill our hearts. Like if you're having trouble in your finances or trouble trying to find a job, sometimes those very things can build up in your heart too and then you start to get frustrated. And it's not at anybody in particular. It's just because you're having a hard time in life, in situations too. So it's not always about what people say. But... Those are also things that can build up in our heart. We have to be mindful of it. I want you to take this week and think on these things. Think on the things that you say and the, the things that you do and how you conduct your life. I'm going to give you some additional verses that you should read and meditate on. And you can read them in your own time. Ephesians 4.29, this sets the standard. Read Ephesians 4.29, write these down. Ephesians 4.29, it talks about not letting wholesome talk, unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Um, this is a good one. James 3, 8 through 12. This advises us on how to control our tongue. It yes, it can be controlled. Everything doesn't have to be bad all the time. And if you don't feel like being nice today, because you're in a bad mood, don't say nothing. Just control it. Zzz, zip it. Here's another one. James 4, verses 11 through 12. So it's not just about the evil words that we speak to people that we're going to have to give an account for, but every careless word, every inactive word that we'll have to give an account for. Remember, our words can hurt. They can destroy. They can tear down. Or our words can build up. 
and encourage and bring hope to people. Haven't you ever been in a situation where you didn't need somebody to tear you down, but you needed somebody to encourage you? Haven't you ever been in a situation where nobody else would? You had to encourage yourself. How do you do that? You go to the Word of God. You take it to God in prayer. The Holy Spirit will encourage you. And he will remind you of who you are in Christ, regardless of what's going on. Because he also, his word tells us that in this life, we will have trials and tribulations. But we, as the body of Christ, have to learn. Times are getting short. We have to learn how to conduct our lives. Because one day we will have to give an account. Final thought on Think on These Things Thursdays for August 22nd. And I want you to ponder this. The verse in Psalms 141 says, Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. So take this week to set a guard on your heart. To set a guard on what you say. It's not always easy to think it through before you speak it. Sometimes we just blurt stuff out. You know, especially if we're frustrated. Especially if we're angry. We just blurt things, whatever comes off the top of our head. But the more we begin to fill ourselves with the word of God. And encourage ourselves. And be reminded of who we are in Christ. And that we represent him in this earth. And the more we remind ourselves that one day we will have to give an account. For what we say and what we do. The more we stay in tune with the Holy Spirit and spend time seeking him. The easier it may get. Yes, we're going to have times of frustration. But those words can be those evil words, those idle words. The idle chit chat that we have with um, different people about dumb stuff. That ha means nothing. Like a lot of the social media stuff. The more we yield our lives, render our lives unto the Lord Jesus Christ, the more we will represent Christ the way he wants us to in this earth. Remember, every idle word, even if you have to write them down, it's like, what, you know, and go back and, and confess this to the Lord and, and ask him to forgive you for these words that you speak that make no sense. Did it bring anyone to Jesus? Did it bring hope to anyone? Did it bring hope to yourself? So think on these things. And I pray that the word has blessed you today. I pray that you take heed to it. I need to let you know that this applies to me first. I don't get on here and teach anything that I have not had to walk through first. Because I'm not going to come on here and sound like some, I used to know a preacher that would get online. No, he didn't get online because they didn't have social media back then. He would get on the videos at, at a church and would speak high and mighty things. And it's like I never understood him because his, he, his revelation was so deep. It's like I don't live on a cloud. I live right here on earth. I need to know what it takes for me to be able to live right here on this earth. But no, this man spoke like he was living on a cloud somewhere. It did not help me in my everyday life. Think on these things Thursdays. Think on these things. Learn how to live out your walk right now in this present time without delay. And remember that every idle word you speak, your actions, one day you will give an account for. I want to thank you for listening, taking this time out to listen. You can share this if you want. Oh, and <laughs> remember that in November, we are having a conference, Healing and Deliverance Conference. It's going to be, the address is in Greenville, 1007 West Arlington Boulevard. We have some guest speakers that are coming. It's going to be Saturday, November 30th, Sunday, December 1st, 1007 West Arlington Boulevard, where Apostle Lonnie Stocks is the presiding apostle over that particular ministry. It's called Jesus Saves Ministry. It's a healing deliverance conference. If you want to send your leadership from your church, anyone is welcome. The It's a two-day conference. On Saturday, there will be a breakfast at 8.30, and then there's going to be some classes. And then on Sunday, there's going to be a closing service. We're going to have our pastor from the Sanctuary of Jacksonville come. His name is Pastor Jonathan Cook. We have Omar Morton coming from Brooklyn. 
we have Chris Johnson, Apostle Chris Johnson, coming from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And then on Sunday, Ellen and I will be closing out the service. The cost of the conference, uh, yes, we don't normally ask for money for things. There are a lot of people who won't even give you a word, of, a prophetic word, unless you pay them first. No. But it, we do realize that the gospel is free, but it's the conduit through which it flows that you have to pay for. So the, the cost is $27 per person, and you can pay over the phone. Uh, I can give you two phone numbers that you can pay by. First number is 252-525-8036, or the other number that you can call is 252-638-9449, or you can mail in your payments to Restore and Unify Radio Ministries, and the mailing address is P.O. Box 12052, Jacksonville, North Carolina, 28546. We look forward to seeing you there. Um, share that news with other people. And I believe when my husband comes home this weekend, he is going to have a word for you also. So stay tuned. He'll have something that will also encourage you, that will bring hope. And that will give you direction in this life. So we love you to life. And we look forward to seeing you again. And I will see you next Thursday on Think on These Things Thursdays. Have a blessed day. Bye.